All right. I would like to welcome all of our guests tonight as we talk about everything parents need to know about Canvas. Everything, right, Colin? Everything. Absolutely everything. <laughs> Um, this is our second parent speaker series of the school year. As a reminder, we hold these um, twice monthly on Tuesday evenings in order to help um, you as parents have access to the tools that you need to be successful in supporting your child's educational journey. I am Tara Sparks. I'm the Chief Academic Officer for the district. And tonight we have our fabulous um, coordinator of blended learning, Colin Davitt. He, I should, I would be remiss if I didn't say he was also our 2020 employee of the year. So um, he is, definitely is um, a, a valuable member of the teaching and learning department and will be a great resource tonight as he leads you through um, how to understand and use Canvas to support your children. So Colin, um, oh, one more thing before we begin, just so that you're all aware of the tools that you have to interact with us, there is a Q&A button on your screen where you can type in questions and we will use that to um, answer your questions and address any needs that you have over the course of tonight's webinar. So thank you so much, Callan, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Good evening, everybody. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna take you through a Canvas journey tonight. I'm gonna be talking to you as a parent of two Lindbergh students, um, Sammy, who's in 12th grade and Aiden, who's in 10th grade over at the high school. And um, I wanna take you through what I experience uh, as a parent. So I wanna start you on what I think is probably one of our most important things that we have is our district webpage. There is a ton of great information here. And just for an example, if you go across the top, you can see as I hover, there's a bunch of drop downs. One of the drop downs here that we have created for you is under the blended learning tab. If I click that, we're going to have a Canvas page. This will be, uh, is being recorded and will be shared out with you on our uh, YouTube page. So if you don't catch all the steps, um, you can go back and watch the uh, video later on. So to explain a little bit of how this page is set up, we set it up with first as really what is Canvas? I'll show you some of that tonight. You can look at it from a student's point of view, how they log into Canvas as a student, and then overview for families at home. Two distinctions here is sometimes you'll hear your children say, I got to go to lscanvas.com to log in. That is specifically for kids. For anybody at home, for families, you use lsparents.com. I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. If you're not sure how to create a Canvas account as a parent, as, for, as a family member, this is going to show you how to do that on the computer, the mobile browser, or through the app. Scrolling down a little bit more, we're going to talk a little bit, uh, we'll cover this tonight about the um, announcements, which is one of the more important elements of Canvas for families and students. But if you want some additional supports, we have links here that will go into greater depth. And then as always, down here at the bottom, we have our email address. So if you have questions, feel free to shoot us an email at canvas at lindberghschools.ws. And some from, someone from the team will take a look at that and get back to you. So what I'm going to do now is jump into Canvas. This is, this is my parent dashboard. When I log in, this is what I see. A couple of things to notice, though, that I use my, my own children is sometimes guinea pigs that I'll put them in different courses. So you may see things like I took off my, my uh, son, 10th grader, who he was in a first grade classroom recently. So I just took him out of that course just to clean up my dashboard a little bit. I also have a sample student in, the, in here, student one, that we use for testing. So, put in my notes to make sure I'm good. Okay, so just remember this is, I went to lsparents.com and logged in here. So one of the first things I wanna do, hold on, I gotta turn that back. Okay, so when you log in, this is just maybe something personal, but I turn off the cover, color overlays and I'm gonna click the ice cream cone. If you look around a lot in Canvas, you're gonna see a ton of ice cream cones. And what I mean is if you look in the upper right-hand corner, there's three dots. And some people say, Colin, why is that an ice cream cone? Well, if it was one dot, that's kind of a sad ice cream cone, but three dots makes a really good ice cream cone. So me personally, I just come in here and click and turn off the color overlay just because I like the bright, fresh colors. 
one of the first things I do is rearrange my tiles. So I see here's the marching band class. Then you can tell both of my children are in it. Here's a pack class that Aiden is in, the pack class that Sam is in. So um, this is a sandbox. So I'm going to drag and take this down and put it out of the way. And maybe AP Psych for Sammy is something I really want to keep an eye on. So I'm going to put that first. And then Chemistry for Aiden, I'm going to drag that up here and put that second. So I always recommend, this is for students and for parents, to rearrange your tiles. Some parents put it as, I'm going to put child number one here, and then next I'll put child number two. But it's really up to you and how you want to organize that or rearrange it. But sometimes looking at these tiles here and looking at the names can be um, uh, kind of insider information. They're like, who's your AP Psych teacher again? And um, I just want to make it a little bit easier. So we're going to go back to the idea of a ice cream cone. And if we look on each individual tile, you're going to see in the upper right hand corner an ice cream cone. So if I click that, I can put a nickname in here. So um, And maybe I want to make this for Sammy blue. I'm going to click apply. So now I see it's psych class and it's blue. And so maybe it's just easier for me uh, and my wife to sit down and go psych class and I can click. If I click the ice cream cone again, I can always, I can get rid of this, click apply and it's going to go back to normal. I'm going to go ahead and put that nickname back in there because this is easier for me. Um, I'm going to click the ice cream cone for Aiden and just put science Aiden. And we'll make his like a red color and click apply. So what I can do now, if I had a little bit of time, I would go through and color code these and put them in some sort of order. Um, one of my ideas too that I've done is I put these in order, like these are the classes that I need to keep an eye on or that we need to talk about most often, more than let's say trigonometry or marching band. Maybe marching band would be over here and the pack classes would be lower in, I'm not saying they're lower in priority, but it's just something that maybe I don't have to focus on um, today with the kids. So on your dashboard, the three big things is, that was just personal going here to turn off the color overlay, rearranging the tiles, however you see fit, and then clicking the ice cream cone and giving it a nickname. Those are just some of the ways that I use initially to set up my dashboard for parental um, success. A couple more things that you wanna notice here on the dashboard are over on the far right-hand side. We have, these are the things that are coming up and then I have something down here that says view grades. I also want to remind you that the grades, the official grade book is always going to be SIS. And so that is what gets reported to the state, put on transcripts. But if I click here, sometimes I'm going to see, like um, now again, my kids are in some sample classes, so this isn't as clean. Um, and again, here is my sample student. Um, so I can look at marching band uh, for Sammy. I can look down here um, at some of my other courses if I scroll through. But some of these things, like there might be a dash here. So I would either go to SIS or I can go directly to the course. So I'm going to click back to show you something else in the upper right hand corner. So on this is one really easy way that I can do a quick glance. So I can have a dinner time or couch conversation with the kids to say, hey, I know you've got a um, mods four through six reading quiz, Sammy, that is, well, it's due tonight at 9 p.m. So let's talk about that. Or how did you, you know, what were the questions? So this is a good conversation starter. But sometimes I want a little bit more. And it's kind of like saying, I want to put in very little effort, but get a very high return. And that's where I would say over in the green navigation, I would click on calendar. So before it looks overwhelming, I want to show you a couple of secrets. Everything is going to be color coded. And you want to look at the far right hand side. Now, I might not in the, uh, click on for to turn on pack. But um, here is a class for Aiden. This is one of Sammy's classes. So what I'm doing is just turning these on. Oh, here's a math and here's two more classes. Here's another class for the kids. So I can go through in here and click on some of the classes and I can turn the ones off that I don't want to see. 
And so as you see, it's filled up my calendar with these different colors so I can match it over here to say, this is a site class for Sammy. Um, here's another Sammy class here. So how I use the calendar is like, for example, just sitting down on the couch yesterday with Aiden and taking a look at what was due. And I'm pretty sure this is a conversation or something that's happened in every single one of our houses that um, have anybody watching right now. So I noticed he's got a two column notes uh, assignment that was due. And I noticed that um, it was due at 8 p.m. yesterday. So we sat down and uh, maybe at four o'clock yesterday. I said, hey, pull that up and let me see it. If I click on it, it's gonna kind of tell me a little bit about what it's what the assignment is, uh, is, is for or the details of it. And what happened is he had finished it, but he didn't turn it in. And so it was kind of one of those, if I wouldn't have looked at the calendar, it wouldn't have been turned in on time and it would have been late. So that's why I say one of the secrets of Canvas is this green calendar button and you're gonna see all the things that are due in that particular week. I can toggle on and off these uh, tiles on the side just to make it a little bit easier for me to look at. Um, I could put my, the courses I have uh, most concern about, or you can customize this how you see fit. So, okay. So a couple of things about this, if I click on um, chemistry here, this, this unit one review, I click on it and I can see this pop up here and I know it's for Aiden and I click on this to reveal, okay, what is the review about? You're gonna see something that you're gonna encounter across multiple areas of Canvas. I cannot click here to sign in because I do not have a school student Google account. And at first it's like, well, as a parent, I wanna see this. There's a few reasons for this. One of the most important is uh, if I was logged in with Aiden's account, it would pop up. Here's the assignment that's due. Here's all the resources I need at one click of a button. And the reason it works is because Google is integrated with Canvas. Canvas is integrated with SIS. So what happens is when I turn something or when he turns something in, Mr. Doherty goes in, sees that Aiden has turned it in, can grade it, give feedback, and it syncs right with SIS all in one uh, complete package. So at this point, I've asked Aiden yesterday to say, hey, can you pull this up and can I take a look at it? Now, I know I'm painting a really good rosy picture, and I think my wife was on this too, and she would be able to chime in to say, it doesn't go that well all the time with our kids. And I'm sure that's exactly the same thing uh, sometimes in your houses, that um, when you have these great conversations about homework or when it was due, or I see this um, a comment a teacher left on one of your pieces of work, um, you know, we, we would always hope it goes well, but um, but sometimes it does. And so this is one really easy way to say, okay, show me the test review and let's talk about some, some like what are you learning in chemistry? I'm gonna click back on my calendar again in the green navigation. Just as a summary of what we're seeing here, there's a few more elements, but really basically is today is the gray day right here. Here are the things that are due at some point today, like here's a 3 p.m. and here's a 9 p.m. Over in the far right-hand side, this is where I can adjust, turn on, like if I, I can turn psych off and you can see it disappears for the, for the whole calendar and I can adjust it. This is a really good, easy way to get a glance at what's happening in the week. And so we can help our kids uh, time management because I know there's, for our kids, there's band and there's other weekend activities. And so if we can look at it, then we know like what we need to front end on the weekend or uh, maybe do a ton of work on Thursday to get ready for Friday. Now I'm gonna click over here on the upper left, it's under account because this is the second most important thing and it's notifications. So under account notifications, what this will do is push things to my, my cell phone um, through the parent app on my phone, but also will push to my personal email. And all these things are, are potential announcements that Canvas can give me more information what's happening. But if I'm not really sure what like due date means, if I just take my mouse and hover over it, it's gonna tell me um, if an assignment due date has changed, um, if there has been uh, some sort of late grading. Oh, but late grading, if you look, is only for instructors and admin for Canvas. So some things will be for parents, some things will be for teachers. 
What I would say is I wouldn't toggle a ton of things here um, unless you've been getting a lot of notifications or you need more notifications immediately. And so if I go over to this right column, I can notice that for due dates, it's going to give me just a daily summary every day at like four o'clock, I think I get an email that says here's the daily summary of due dates. If I click, I can adjust this to I can turn them totally off or every time there's a due date or a due date adjustment, it's going to notify me immediately through my email. But like I said, I would probably leave these alone and adjust them as you see fit. But I want to tell you another little story. I had a, a parent email me and say, you know, um, I'm getting announcements for everything except for this one course. And so we checked in her notifications and everything was set up correctly because announcements, which is the most important, and I'll explain that in a second, but they were already listed to be notify immediately. So there's one more place that you can adjust these things. If I go to dashboard and I want to go into let's say the chemistry course for for Aiden. If I look over here, I can it's view course notifications. So I've got all my notifications set up for Canvas in general, like it's just going to behave this way. But let's say chemistry is an area of concern. This is where I can go into the view course notifications and I can set this to notify immediately. And so then I'll get a notification on my on my device. So then we can have um, a dinner time conversation about uh, a due date uh, for chemistry. So in a nutshell, inside of the account, there's notifications. You can adjust those so you can be alerted of when things are um, turned in, graded. But just like what we saw before, sometimes when you click on a notification, you might not be able to see everything because that's tied to a Lindbergh student account. And the reason is so then it can be easily tied into Canvas and SIS all at the same time. I'm going to go to my dashboard. Oh, one last thing. Under account, I'm going to go to observing because to connect your kids to your um, to your Canvas account, you're going to need to put in a student pairing code. That's on our website on how to do that. But if I go under observing, this is where I could add another student pairing code, and then it could show up here and appear on my dashboard. And at some point, if I don't need student one anymore, I can just click remove. Okay, now I'm going to go to my dashboard because now uh, that we've looked at some of the notification pieces, the big things here, I want to get into a couple of classes. So I'm going to start in college comp right down here, one of Sam's classes. I'm going to click. So a lot of times what I like to tell people is just take a second and orient yourself with the homepage of the Canvas course. I like to think of this as, you know, Monopoly, where they say uh, Park Place um, is the, the properties you really want to own. Uh, you know, it's location, location, location. It's front page of Canvas courses are the same way. This is the most important because you're going to find a lot of things here that are going to be relevant to what's going on. So here's the agenda goals of the week. If I click that, it just opens it up right away. And Mr. Piantek has like a running list. So you can see like what was at the beginning of the year or what's this week. So this week is a really big week because they're drafting something they're having conferences. Um, and the first draft is due very, very soon. So this is something that um, I could have Sammy show me or share with me. Okay, what does your draft look like? What are you writing about? I know it's about our black belt test because I I looked at something earlier. And so I'm very excited to read like her first draft of that personal experience for her. If I go back to Mr. Piantek's homepage again, um, now on the far right inside of each class is right now there's no assignments like immediately. And so these would show up right here. So not only in the main page of Canvas, you're going to see kind of some global things, but inside each course, there's going to be some coming ups or some to do's that also helps not me as a parent, but also um, like Sammy. So a couple of things you want to look for always is agenda and modules. Do you guys remember when you got a trapper keeper, if you're about my age? So you got those really cool trapper keepers, those like binders and inside the, the binder, you would have these colored folder folders like red, 
um, green, blue, and maybe yellow. And so think of a, a module is kind of like that. You have the Trapper Keeper, which is canvas or your course. And inside there, there's folders. So the folder is like, here's the personal narrative. So here's the paper, here are the assignments. Um, so this might be something I would want to talk to Sammy about is, okay, so you're writing this personal narrative, there's the rubric, this is how you're going to be graded. But again, if I click on this, it gives me the sad face because I don't have a school Google account that she does. So in a second on our Chromebook, she just pulls it up and we can take a look at the um, rubric and, and, and really uh, tailor her writing based upon um, the personal narrative and what they're looking for. So if I go back to modules, there are some things that we can see, like this brainstorming PDF is fantastic. It's very, I love this, that he created this beautiful uh, infographic, and it's really easy for us to get around some of these big ideas and to really help her expand her writing. So going back to our dashboard on the far left, the green navigation, I'm going to jump into college algebra. There it is. I think it's this one. Yep, there we go. And we're going to notice a couple of same things. While the page looks slightly different, you're going to have some of the same elements. Like before, we've got an agenda. We've got modules. Like every teacher's homepage, though, I apologize. For some reason, my... Uh, headset turned off. So uh, Tony, if you can't hear me, just let me know. Um, but I'm going to keep talking. So we have on every teacher's homepage, we're looking again for agenda and modules. And then over here, what we have is how can, well, who's the teacher and how can I find them? The extension and the conference. So seventh hour, I could give them a call if I had a, a concern. So I want to click here on agenda because this has been very helpful as well. Like, so today there was, or yesterday there was no school. So this is where they're working on some of their assignments because tomorrow they have a quiz and then they're gonna move into their next uh, chapter by Friday. So this is something um, I can talk to Sam about again is getting ready for your quiz that's coming up on Thursday. Again, to help her kind of plan her day and her time is to try to figure out like what is important? What do I need to put my time to today? I'm going to click back to my dashboard. We're just going to show you like two more things and then open up for some questions if you might have some. We're going to go to English 2. So as this one looks initially different, we're going to see some of the same things. Like we have our agenda and we have our modules. We can find uh, Ms. Olive's contact information here, a little bit about herself how to contact her and where to find her. That's more for kids, but then this is where I can um, give her a call during fourth period. Just as a quick reminder in the upper right, here's the upcoming assignments that we have. And of course I could adjust my course notifications here if I needed to. I'm gonna click on modules. Intro to reading the Odyssey. This is a page, I'm jumping forward a little bit. So I want to how to read an epic po how to read epic poetry. So this one is the presentation that they use in class. So if Aiden was having trouble with some poetry, this would be a really easy way for me to go in there and we could look at it together to figure out okay what elements are are they looking for when reading a poem or how do you read a poem and how to extrapolate the information out for whatever the assignment is for whatever we're doing next. I'll go back to my tab and here, like thinking about translation, if I go opening lines, we're going to notice this is going to ask me to sign in with my school Google account because there are some things that the kids are going to do and then be able to turn back in very quickly. And so that's why um, some of these things we can see like the um, presentation about poetry, but some of them are going to be assignments. So having Aiden pull up in his Chromebook, you can see it right there, or I can address it to say, I want you to take a open up the opening lines bit and let's take a look at that because I know you're going to struggle with it, whatever it may be, whatever your family needs to do. But this is a really easy way to navigate into that. Just really two last things. Geometry. 
which is right here. While this appears a little different, we're going to have the weekly agenda. And if you need help, you can go over here, or that's how to access the teacher. Very easy. Here's all the things that are up and coming. But I want to go to over here to class notebook. You're going to notice that a lot of our teachers are in math, especially at the high school and middle school, are going to be using something called OneNote. This is where our teachers can go in there and um, put some PDFs or some things for the kids to write on and fill out and turn it into the teacher so they can see their actually mathematics uh, as they're working out problems, very similar to like a math notebook, paper and pencil, but yeah, this is using digital ink. So again, it, it amplifies that um, I turn it in as a student and then the teacher is able to see it immediately and then give it right back to me with some corrections or some annotation. So it's just, um, making the process a lot more efficient. Modules. I, I absolutely love this. And I want to look at um, this one in particular, 1.2, the notes. So I don't know about you, but sometimes I have a little trouble. Uh, when I say sometimes, I mean always with um, high school math. Sometimes I'm, I just don't know the right language or the, the terminology or the formulas, but it's really great because so many of our teachers have created short videos so I could click play, watch it at the table and help our kids through the math, or they could help me through the math is, is more like it. And if I click back on dashboard, just the one last thing I want to show you before uh, I can open it up for any questions is the psychology class. Again, it's going to be that same kind of formula. Formula. If you look around a little bit, here's the modules, here's the agenda. And so on the agenda, it's really easy for Sammy to pull up to say today is Tuesday. And I don't remember if she has class today or not. I assume she had class today. Um, but here's what you need to do before class. Here's the learning target that we're working on. Here's what we're doing in class. And here's what's for homework. And she can check off and see when everything is due. Going back to the dashboard. The last thing I want to point out is just looking at all of these here, looking at your tiles, I really recommend reorganizing them and then jumping into a class and clicking on a few things. Really look for the agendas and look at modules and then have that conversation um, with your kids about um, like what they need to be doing based upon what you see in the modules or the daily agenda or really the calendar and turning on your announcements. That is a whole world in itself. So I want to thank you for your time tonight. And um, like Dr. Sparks said, at the bottom of your screen, uh, there's a little Q&A button. If you do have some questions, feel free to click on that and then uh, type in your question and we can uh, answer that to the best of our abilities tonight. But also don't forget, later on tonight, you may be thinking like, hmm, I do have a question. Go to canvas at limbergschools.ws and we will get that email and someone from the team will reach out to you as soon as possible. All right, Colin, we'll just, oh, we have a question. Okay. We get excited. <laughs> <laughs> totally. So we have one question about logging, like I would help, I would like help logging in. And so let me show you that. So what I, here's what we recommend is starting on the district homepage. And you would go in here and go to programs and services and blended learning. When you click blended learning, there's a button here that says Canvas. And all of this here is going to step you through and how to log in, how to set up your parent account, and then how to log in, which we'll go after your, your next question is asking about um, how do I get my pair, uh, pairing codes to connect my parent account to my child's account. And so very similar to um, when I clicked account here, the student, the child would click on the, uh, their account. And then over on here, under settings, there is a button over here that says generate my pairing code. Because that what happens is this children have to generate their pairing code. So then that links them securely to the parent account. If you have trouble with that, um, I always recommend, um, letting me know and I can work with the school counselor to get you to that code if um, if you forget the process or if um, it's just 
like your child is at school and you need to connect it now. And so we, we help um, people almost daily uh, with that process. Okay, here's a great question. So can a, um, can a parent and a student be on the student's account at the same time? This is the great thing about it is that I sat down with my computer on the couch and Aiden sat down with his Chromebook. I was in my parent account and he was in his um, student account at the same exact time. And it, you can definitely be in the accounts at the same time because really honestly, it's kind of two different accounts uh, accessing Canvas at the same time. And so if you are thinking of any more questions, feel free to type them away. But don't forget Canvas at LindberghSchools.ws. And we'll stay on for just a couple of more minutes. So if there are any further questions, but it looks like things are kind of wrapping up. Definitely appreciate that. Thank you for the positive comment. All right, Colin. Oh, oh. thank oh, you, everyone. Never mind. See, you never <laughs> even just <laughs> a few more seconds. There are thank yous. <laughs> no, definitely. All right, well, as Colin shared, if you have further questions, you can always reach out via email. Um, we are ha happy to support you as you work with your children. There is a question that just came in on how to delete an icon from last year. So every once in a while, there was a few courses from ARC last year that it's called ar like um, archiving or moving it into past enrollments. If, uh, if you just email me at Canvas at LindberghSchools.ws uh, with the name of the the child's the child's name and then the course that needs to disappear off the dashboard. I can definitely take care of that for you. All right. Well, thank you all for being with us tonight. Um, as Colin mentioned earlier, we are recording this, so we'll share out the the. Um, video if you want to go back and reference anything that he has shown you this evening. Thank you so much.